our Russian Bible school, when it opens, they've already got over 600 people waiting for it to open. Because they're wanting to get more of this. It's a movement. This thing, we couldn't stop it if we tried. So used to, my big thing, I even preached a sermon one time on this saying, will your gospel die with you? In other words, if you could not preach again, if you couldn't witness again, if you could never utter the name of Jesus again to anybody, teach them, share anything at all, and then you died, would what you know die with you? Or have you shared it enough already that it would continue on even after you're gone? Because that used to just bug me. I kept thinking, God, this, this almost died out for 70 years. We were able to resurrect it. We were able to bring it back in. And it's running. I said, God, we've got to get people that do this. People can't just look at me and think, well, that's him. That's his anointing. That's his gift. I said, people have to understand that anybody can do this. And I said, God, this has got to be to the point where if I died today, this will carry on. And I used to wonder. And I mean, I was, God, you know, what, what's going on? What's happening? Where is it? Where is, you know, what, who's going to carry this on? And I'll never forget it because I started training people how to do it. And we started seeing it. And then I was standing on the platform in a church in Denver. And I'll never forget it because it was one of the first times that I actually said, okay, all of you that have been here for the whole week, you're going to minister to the sick. I'm not going to do it. I'll do some, but you're going to do it. And we started letting them minister and healing started. I said, if, when you get healed, raise your hand. And we started watching hands raise up just from believers. Never laid hands on anybody before in their life. And just started happening. They started getting excited. And, I was, and I'll never forget it. I'm standing there watching these hands go up. And years before, I'd heard Jesus. I've not had all kinds of experiences like that, visions and that kind of stuff. But I had a, something happen in my front yard one time where I saw things. And, and I'll never forget it because I heard him say in my ear. Because I, I looked at the people that I was seeing in, in this vision or dream. Or what, it was a vision because I was awake. But I said, I kept looking at these people and they needed help. And I kept saying, I can't get to everybody. I need help doing it. I can't get to everybody. And that's whenever you spoke. And he said, now you know why I ordained the 12. Now you know why I ordained the 70. Because I couldn't get to everyone. I needed help. And I, I caught it. And I realized we've got to train the people to do this. And then I started doing that right after it. And whenever I did that, I'll never forget that night on that platform. I was standing there, and the, for the second time, I heard him. Because my question was, how are we going to get the people to do this? How are we going to keep this going? It can't die with me. And I'll never forget him saying, we can get this done. We can get it done. We can keep this going. And I remember I started crying. I'm just rejoicing because I'm seeing this happen. And I think, even if, what, see, if the, if the enemy was going to do something, he should have done it before then. Because it's too late now. See, you, back then I was a, I was a good target. Because nobody else was doing it. Everybody thought it was an anointing or a gift. But now it's, it's caught on. And honestly, that's good. Because now I'm not near the target I was before. Because the enemy knows, even if, I, if he took me out, it ain't going to stop nothing. It's going to keep on going. 